to have to jump um, straight into our very first issue this morning um, that talks about um, security issues. But let me just quickly remind you that you have to be part of our conversations um, here. Share with us your thoughts. Ask your questions, drop them on the AYV Sierra Leone Facebook page. Um, AYV News Facebook page, I beg your pardon, we'll find time to go through some of them. In the studio, we've been joined by Abdul Karim Will, um, who is the Director of Communications at the Office of National Security. Um, good morning, um, Karim, and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Good morning, Brother Samuel. Good morning, Sierra Leoneans. All right, we have Assistant Commissioner of Police, Brian Kamara, who is the head of the media for the force. Good morning um, and welcome to for sure. Good morning, sir. Yes, yeah, good morning, uh, US. All right, in our studio too, we have lawyer Rashid Dumbuya, who is the executive director for Legal Link. Um, lawyer Rashid, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Thanks for having me. I'm grateful. Um, I'm, I'm going to start off with you, ASP, um, um, ACP, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Um, le le first off, let's, let's look at the call that has been made. The, uh, by Sierra Leoneans. I mean, I'm sure you're not oblivious of it on social media, but um, Sierra Leoneans are calling on others to come out on Independence Day to put on black in a form of protest. Um, first off, how has the Sierra Leone police um, received that particular call? Well, um, honestly, we receive it with mixed feelings because um, it takes us back to what happened last year, August right. 8, 9, and 10. Mm. And... Uh, the same nature of it. Mm. We are in, nobody came out to the police. Nobody requested for clearance. And nobody told us that they were going to come out to demonstrate. Um, it was all over social media. And um, so it's like we are driving towards that direction again. Mm. And so this is why we decided that we must engage the public, let them know that nobody had engaged us. Nobody had come over to us. Nobody had requested us um, for permission to go out and do demonstrations. So, uh, we received that one with mixed feelings, and then this is why we want the public to know that um, they must not come out. Mm -hmm. um, whoever is planning, or whoever is putting that one together, must come over to us as provided for by law. I mean, let's have a kind of tete -a -tete. let's discuss the issues, and then at the end of the day, we can put in place the required security needed mm -hmm. for if they want to demonstrate uh, for it to be done. Let, 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 let's go back. I mean, if you, if you had to give us a, a general assessment of the current state of security in the country, especially in this build-up to the June 24th pools, where would you put civilian security, especially with policing? Well, uh, I want to say it is high up there because uh, we've learned our lessons mm. in so many things, so many situations, so many circumstances. And um, I want to say we are doing our level best at our own level. Mm to make sure that when it comes to internal security, we provide the required security that is needed for the people of this country. If you, if you ask me to grade that one, I want to say we are far above 70%. Mm. All right, uh, um, Karim, l l let me ask you, I mean, the um, Security Steering Committee on Elections, l let's get to it. What are the plans already in place? Because if um, this call is coming at a time like this, especially when we've just seen the report from the August 10 investigative <laughs> Um, committee that was set up by President Bill, and we see how damaging that is. And now we, we, we're seeing a similar trend. Um, what, what is the plan in terms of coordination? So, because we're over two months away from elections, mm. our preoccupation as a sector is how we could get ourselves well prepared, fully prepared for the provision of security during, before, during, and after elections. But the calls that uh, he alluded to are ones that are concerning, mm. and uh, especially so when they are very similar to the calls that made the round uh, in 2020, 2022, leading to the ugly situation in August. And uh, sadly, it's the same set of people, mostly Sierra Leoneans who reside abroad, that are calling on, uh, on suspecting Sierra Leoneans to come out and do demonstrations. We've always stated that uh, we recognized the fact that uh, the right to demonstration is a human right thing. And every citizen in a democratic dispensation like ours has a right to demonstrate. But equally so, the laws also say, even though you have rights to demonstrations, you should also play your own part in terms of your responsibility by approaching the Syrian police. The 1965 Public Order Act is very clear on that. Mm. Section 17 specifically uh, makes reference to that. So it's as a result of this that we are having these kinds of conversation. 
to actually impress on our people, on whosoever wants to go into these kinds of uh, events, to go back and look at the law mm. and engage the police. But uh, on our part as a sector, under the auspices of the Integrated Election Security Planning Committee, mm -hmm. a subcommittee of the National Security Council Coordinating Group, which was activated some one year, six months ago, we've been engaged in a low lot of activities mm. in relation to our preparation for the forthcoming election. So about a year, six months ago, we went around the whole country, all 16 electoral districts, to conduct a district kicks mapping mm. to scan and assess what the problems could be could be the potential stakeholders that you want to uh, leverage on in terms of their experience, in terms of their support to the electoral process, and how we could all collectively be able to provide emotional security. Because the approach to our election security provision, like it has been before, we we'll just heighten it, is to ensure that uh, it is collaborative, it is integrated, it is cooperative. Can I and quickly take um, both of you back um, to the calls for demonstrations? Um, for, for, for many um, activists, I mean, they are on record for saying that it is very diff almost um, impossible for Vassalian police to grant permission for demonstrations. Um, so long as it is anti-government protests or demonstrations, they've not been given permission to um, these guys to, to protest. So what they've done over time is that or certain people, well, unscrupulous people, would then just jump um, to the street, influence others, and cause mayhem. Because, uh, and at the end of the day, nobody takes responsibility because nobody has gone to the to the selling police. Because over time, their experience, according to reports, when they've gone to the selling police, they've always been rejected. You, you, you can start by having a bite. Yeah, yeah. ACP. You know, you always have to test the law. Mm. And people have been saying this one, and, but they've not been coming out to the police. They've not been coming over to the police mm. to test the law. And then those who have been coming out, and then we now have to discuss with them, sit around the table, and then discuss the issues. So, like he alluded to, um, um, demonstrations are mm -hmm. part of democracy. Mm -hmm. So, if there is a law that says this is what you must do for you to do A, B, and C, well, the, the institutions that are there, you just have to make the best use of them. Mm -hmm. Let them come. Whoever is there, let them come. So, don't say, ah, this is what I'm hearing, or this is what they have said before. Let them come. Approach the police, we we'll sit around the table and then we we'll have the discussions. And then um, it's like you taking responsibility for some other things, and I will, will have to take responsibility for some other things. But we are you, know, you decide to just come out without um, um, having discussions with the police. How are we going to, how are we going to regulate traffic? Mm. Say, for example, Abacha Street, it's a crowded area. Mm -hmm. And then maybe your intention is to even use Abacha Street. How are we going to do that one? Mm. So this is why you now have to bring in the police, you now have to have the police on board. So that you do proper mapping and you do you just try to strategize as best as possible so that at the end of the day normal life is not disrupted mm. don't forget there are people who go to work there are people who go to school there are people who go to their farms and so on and so forth people mm. go to do their businesses so normal life should not be disrupted because you want to demonstrate mm. so this is why you engage the police why you have discussion with the police so that you all be part of the planning so this mm. is, this is the situation I, I, have there been um instances where people approach um, the selling police for demonstrations and they've been turned down yes we've had those instances on what grounds and, um, it, it's been very simple they come we discuss and then we ask them how many people are you going to have on the street mm. how many people do you want to put on the street they will tell you we don't know are you going to take responsibility for what they do on the street when you take them out Say, no, I'm not going to take responsibility. I'm responsible for my very self. Mm -hmm. They should be responsible for themselves. So if you want to take people out there to go and demonstrate, and then you cannot take responsibility, you cannot even guarantee how many people are going to come out, then it means um, we cannot allow that one to happen. So these, 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 are, these have been the areas we had mm -hmm. some difficulties. Mm -hmm. So if they are sure of the people that are going to, that are going to take on the street, to process the street of freedom, mm -hmm. to go wherever they want to go, and then at the end of the day, I'm sure we're going to make the adjustment to make mm -hmm. things look better. For all of us. Uh, um, Karim, you can, you, you can have a bite on that. Um, but, but the question I want to ask you is, are, are there mechanisms with the experience um, ACP has, um, uh, has talked about that people come forward when it's time for them to take responsibility, they run away from that, and at the end of the day, the police would then would, would say, oh, no, because we want people to take responsibilities for their actions. So uh, is there any form of mechanism to see how, uh, I mean, some form of compromise can be struck in, 
I mean, it, just in a way to broaden the civic space. And at the end of the day, there is someone to take, um, to take responsibility for whatever goes wrong. Yes, it should actually be the demonstrators or the people that are planning to go into demonstration mm -hmm. that, are, that have to show commitment for taking action, for taking responsibility out of whatever the outcome is. Uh, we are all heirs to what obtains on social media. Mm -hmm. Most of the demonstrations or the calls for demonstrations are preceded by very incendiary rhetorics. Rhetorics that I will tell you that uh, if this is allowed to happen, then you are going to unleash mayhem onto the community, onto the society. Mm -hmm. And don't forget the reason for the engagement of the police by law is in the interest of public defense, public morality, safety and security, and all of those issues. Mm -hmm. And so if you do not tick all of those boxes, and even worse still, before you go into demonstrations, you now begin to hear people saying that uh, on X, Y, Z dates, if we go on demonstration and this category of people do not join us, we are going to do these kinds of things unto mm. them. I mean, if demonstrators or demonstrations are genuine, they should not be preceded by these kinds of dangerous rhetorics. Mm. Because it will only mean that uh, if the police now gives permission to this one, they will be shooting themselves in the leg because somebody has already told you what it is that uh, he will be coming to do on mm. that day. And given back the history of demonstrations in Sierra Leone, I agree there have been several demonstrations that are peaceful. And these are the ones that are genuine, even when they might be against certain governments. Mm. But because the, 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 the demonstrators are genuine in their cause, they will not confront law enforcement. They will not go to destroy public property. They will not obstruct other non-demonstrators. But uh, those ones that will already set the stage to tell you in graphic details what it is that they will be doing, then you have to be very much cautious in ensuring that uh, you have the engagement. I think the, 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 the way forward should be, if you really genuinely want to go into demonstrations, there are a whole lot of structures that you could approach. Have a fruitful dialogue. The Sierra Leone police has primacy in that. If you think that uh, you need to bring some other people's attention to like, provide additional kind of a witness or support to your process, you, ha you, could, you have the leverage to do so. The Office of National Security, for example, the National Security Coordinator, could give uh, 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 airs to these kinds of discussions. But uh, sadly, also, most of the people that are making these calls are people are not, that are not even ordinary residents in Sierra Leone. Mm. And yet they are calling on, sourcing on the crowd, banking on the fact that uh, they have some uh, constituents that listen to them, and calling them to go onto the streets. Mm. Most of when this obtains, it is only mayhem to unsuspecting members of the public. We have seen uh, 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 during the August state, or even before August state demonstration, de demonstration, when people go onto the streets, the next moment is to see those people that are not even originally part of the planned demonstrators to go and begin to loot people's shop. So it will give a, a semblance of a insecurity or the security sector not being able to perform their functions. Mm. And because there are a whole lot of other responsibilities which the sector players are engaged in. It is most important that uh, if you want to go into demonstration, you keep them informed. Uh, but uh, they will uh, not be there uh, to police uh, every event. Creative and innovative ways um, to, to, to again strike a compromise. Because we've seen over time, I mean, referencing the August incident of 2022, where people have refused to take responsibility for, um, for protests or demonstrations. And at the end of the day, they've gone out. And the, 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 the damage they've caused to society, I mean, it, it's, it, it's something you, we, we cannot even measure. Yeah. So are there creative and innovative ways to, at the end of the day, no matter what, you're able to strike a compromise and put things in order. So things do not go beyond, what we're, what, beyond our capacity as a nation. You see, the, the narrative has always been over the period that uh, the security sector, because this one falls with us, mm -hmm. is not uh, very much accommodating to people wanting to right. do demonstrations. I just stated that uh, going back to the history of demonstrations, you want to be very much cautious and certain mm. that uh, if you give permission to people to come out and demonstrate, these set of people have to take responsibility of their actions. I mean, demonstrations all over the world, especially for liberal democratic countries, 
the leaders will take full responsibility of the outcomes. Mm. If for any reason I hardly find difficulty in actually towing the line in that kind of uh, argument, but if for any reason that uh, they have apprehension, that if they directly approach the police, they are mm -hmm. going to find difficulties in having uh, uh, their permission granted. Right. There are other bodies. You can s go to human rights organizations. There are international organizations to say, we want to stage this kind of protest. Mm. And we have this X number of people in mind to bring out to the streets, and this is what we want to do. Can you please help us engage the Sierra Leone police? engage the security sector in ensuring that uh, we are given permission to do demonstrations. And for this particular set of demonstrations, they were calling for the 17th of this month, that uh, was yesterday, and the 27th of, uh, uh, of April. The calls making the rounds by mm. the same set of people who reside abroad, uh, or the argument they are, they, they, they've, they've thrown forward is that uh, they are coming to take over the governance of Sierra Leone. Very much similar to the calls that made the round right. on, on, on August, in August 2022. Mm -hmm. And it is being predicated against the background that uh, they are doing so because when parliament will have been prorogued mm -hmm. sometimes this month, there will be no government in Sierra Leone. That is ironical, that is deceitful, it's shameful right. because we've never had a situation where there is a vacuum by constitutional provision. The President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, even if his tenure ends today, he, be, he remains a legitimate president of that country until a new president is elected. And we are just a little over two months of elections. Mm -hmm. If you actually think that uh, it is your intention to take over the government of the country, you could do so through the ballot box. Mm. So okay. you have an opportunity. If it were a situation where we, there is no end in sight in terms of going into elections, of giving people a space to do X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. then that is understood. But right. the elections that were announced way ago, a year ago. Mm -hmm. So if you actually believe in your strength, in your capacity to, 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 to have the, the public or the electorate to resonate with your ideas, test that through the ballot Continue box. to stay with us. Let's quickly move over to our studio to where we have lawyer Rashid Dumbuya. Um, good morning again. I'm um, just quickly going back to the August, um, the August incidents um, that... Um, that took place in, 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 uh, last year. And with these calls coming in for a similar situation, and it, it, it appears the trend continues. These were the trends that um, preceded the August incidents, um, lawyer Rashid. But, but what are, uh, what do you consider are the reasons why people just take to the streets and um, the, 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 the ACP here has confirmed that people have made attempts, but when it's time for them to take responsibility, they, they, they've not owned up, so they've never been given um, permission because they have to take um, responsibilities for whatever may go wrong when they are out there. What is really happening? Yes, um, thank you very much, um, AYV, for the invitation. I'm grateful and um, I appreciate the discussion. It's timely to have um, a platform like this um, to discuss fairly with the security sector on issues of security and governance, surely as we approach the 2023 June elections. Um, yes, Legal Link has been very um, uh, forthright in terms of um, looking at the security sector and its accompanied challenges, and of course, providing recommendations um, regarding the same. Um, let's be clear from the one that um, the importance of the security sector, particularly the police, in a democratic society cannot be overemphasized. Um, police um, are always needed to protect um, the lives and properties of um, citizens. They are there to maintain law and order. And nothing can be achieved in any democratic society without the involvement of the security sector. And that's why we have joined um, and we continue to join, I mean, I mean, of course, it's with all meaningful Sierra Leoneans to condemn anyone that tries to kill them or hurt them or make them look insignificant in the nation. We cannot live in a peaceful society without the security sector. That is something everyone must understand and accept. Mm. Now, on the flip side, what perhaps are the challenges um, I, I, I see in my security sector daily is the fact that they must understand that they are policing or doing their work within the context of a democracy. And that is very key for the police 
especially the police, to understand this. Mm. They are not doing their work in a context of an autocratic system of government. Mm. And in a democracy, the standards are high. There are higher expectations because rights have to be respected. Well, uh, yes, because uh, I just wanted you yeah. to, to put that for us into context, um, yes. that they have to understand their policing I mean, under a democratic dispensation. Yes. So, so, so it means hmm. that um, they must understand and upheld the tenets of democracy. Mm. And fundamentally, is they have to respect fundamental human rights to ensure that people enjoy you know, their rights in that context of democracy. So there are four key obligations that the state has in a democratic context. So one, the state has a duty to protect. Mm. And so that is why the police is created to ensure that the third parties don't infringe on the rights of uh, people in the democratic society. The duty to respect, you know, most, in other words, it means they must refrain from interfering in the enjoyment of the rights of citizens. The duty to fulfill, to create an enabling environment for citizens to, 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 to enjoy institutions that will help to foster and make them fulfill their rights. The duty to promote, you know, was to create the awareness for citizens to understand their rights and be able to claim them when they are threatened or violated. So the state, the state through the police force has so much to do in mm. a democracy. And that is why, that is where we, we notice the challenge has been. How the police in the context of democracy has been very challenging. And this is not to say that it is peculiar to this government. I, Even I, in the past government, I, I just want, I, I, I wanted to, to ask, what, what mm. are some of the instances you would yes. want to cite? So for yeah. example now, uh, um, it's, it's a common practice for for um, the police to always be apprehensive when people want to demonstrate. Right. And, and, and I have always said, you know, as a human rights expert, that demo demonstration, peaceful demonstration, is integral in a democratic society. And so the Public Order Act should not and should never be used as a vanguard to suppress the, um, peaceful demonstrations or the right to peaceful assembly and associations. You know, I, I, I agree there is, a, there is a procedure to be followed, and that procedure should not also be misconstrued by the police to mean um, permission. It's simply saying notify. It's a notification requirement. And it's the police that has the duty to act speedily mm. if they think that demonstration is not to be held. And now here is also what international law and regional law have supported. When you are notified, you must, not, you must not go and limit the right. The notification there is to simply enhance the enjoyment of the right. So it's to give you proper notice to put in place security um, checks, to put in place uh, manpower, logistics, to enjoy the actualization of the right. Not to, not to, I repeat, stop or limit the enjoyment of the right, no matter how you perceive the threat to be. So the police is, has a duty that's why they are paid. That's why we give them their taxpayers' money. They ought to support her to have all within their powers to enjoy, even if it means two parties, I mean, I mean, I mean requesting at the same time, they must be seen to orderly divert them, provide security, and they both enjoy their rights equally at the same time. That's the professionalism we want to see. So the too much disqualification, the too much apprehension, you know, creates a room for I mean, rogues, rogues and, 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 and miscreants to now seize the opportunity and perhaps inject philosophies in the people of Sierra Leone and go underground and do mischiefs. So again, we are saying, when you suppress internal democratic tenets, you create inadvertently a situation where people will now go underground and miscreants will now seize the opportunity to, to carry out their mischievous deeds. What, 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 so, are, the, what are the better ways yes. um, that the police mm. can actually handle um, issues like that? You, you just mentioned they should just, just bank on the um, 1965 Public Order Act. Yes. So, so what are the other ways, I mean, in a democratic society? Mm -hmm. Because, we, we, like you mentioned, and we've read in different reports that have been published that when people are suppressed, then they have to, they have to find ways to, to, to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's always um, been in a violent manner. Mm -hmm. So what are the better ways in a democratic society that these issues can be handled so that the voices of Sierra Leoneans who, who want to, 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 to express their grievance, their dissatisfaction are heard? 
S. So I agree with you. So this is democratic policing. So we must have a conversation around this. So for example, if um, the police could even take the lead. So it's not all the time people should notify. Okay, in the event where you want to have a demonstration, maybe on this day, maybe let's come, come together. We want you to have it. And we're going to enhance it done in a peaceful way. So the assurances also should come from them. All right, political parties, you are welcome. Nobody will be denied. All right, peaceful demonstration. We'll show you the place to converge. We'll be there with you to escort you and give you the time frame in which you express it, your, your, your dissent in a peaceful way and then go back home. So if the police is seen proactively, perhaps engaging in these kind of conversations and not necessarily trying to, to be robust and then see everybody as a nail and they as armors to nail anyone, perhaps the change of approach will, will bring a change of results. So going forward, mm. I believe we must learn lessons from the August 8, 9, and 10 incident. The report is out. We are studying the report, and definitely we'll bring our approach report on it. But the lessons that we should learn, perhaps, is how do we now open the space internally for people to, at the very least, express their, their dissent in peaceful ways that will not um, create violence and perhaps mayhem for the national security interests of the nation. So these are the things we must have question on. We must not be too apprehensive. You know, sometimes, again, when we exaggerate, we speculate, and we are apprehensive, what happens? We create the environment for people now to seize opportunity and go underground and do mischievous acts. So the Adebayo effect, I've always argued, is perhaps being seen again because perhaps in many ways, we are not also looking at internal ways on how we could now open the space and, and silence his voice. So his voice becomes more stronger when internal voices are suppressed. That's the thing we must also learn from this. People today are always going to listen to Adebayo because they believe people are not talking in internally. And when they talk, they arrest them. Or when they talk, they, 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 they name them as, as political agents. So we have to create this space. Let people be free to express their dissent against the government, or against the minister, or against the police, without fearing at the end of the day that they will be arrested or locked up illegally. So by so doing, we suppress external dissenting voices. Because there is no need for that anymore. Because we are having the space to discuss the issues, and the police is tapping our backs to making sure we enjoy our rights in a peaceful way, in a democratic society. Look at All me. Right. The truth is this. Sierra Leoneans are angry on many issues. The economy is, is affecting the people. So they want to talk. They want to express themselves. Let's don't suppress it. It's democracy. The government has a, has a, a, a room to now give feedbacks and give their defense. That's what make democracy makes it, makes it beautiful. When the government is accountable, held accountable, and they now go and I mean, give their defense, and then we make a case as to whether they should continue or not continue. That's the beauty of democracy. As long as they do so within the ambit of the law, and don't be violent in doing so. We have to create that enabling environment. That's my call for the, to the police at this moment. The, I mean, the elections are coming close. People may want to also um, be in the street to do their campaigns, to express their dissent against right. the government. Let, that let, space should not be shrinked, I'll, I'll and that space I'll should be I'll come right back to you, Rashi. Let me come back to the main studio where we Good. have um, the Assistant Commissioner of Police, who is the head of the media, and um, the Director of Communications at Office of National Security. Um, SCP, you've listened to what um, Lawyer Rashid has submitted. And um, it, it is very clear that policing is very challenging in Sierra Leone, either on the side of the police and the, the, the public, because um, we've seen how civilians have also been very, very calcitrant in some situations, leading to some violent um, um, incidents. So with what Rashid has mentioned, how should we strike compromise? How, the, the thought about policing in the, I mean, in the 21st century, under a democratic dispensation, how um, we should not just be rigid with the law, we should be able to engage and have an understanding so that people, pe I mean, people's vo views can be heard, can be expressed in a manner in which the police can also assist them to do so. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we very much aware of the fact that we are policing mm -hmm. the democratic society. And the human rights issues are very core, and mm -hmm. we are aware of that one as well. But like he said, I mean, the whole thing is um, hinges around the fact that if you want to demonstrate, hmm, let it be peaceful. Mm -hmm. If it is not peaceful, and there are signs that those demonstrations are not going to be peaceful, you do not expect the police to fold their hands and then you allow you to come and destroy lives, destroy property. Mm -hmm. That's our mandate. That's our responsibility. If you look at the, the Police Act of 1964, it is clearly stated 
that when it comes to protection of lives and property, that's the work of the police. When it comes to enforcing laws, that's the work of the police. Maintenance of law and order, that's the work of the police. You know, prevention and detection of crime, that's the work of the police. And if we don't, if we are not doing that one, and then something goes wrong, look at the report that came out. People said we didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. So, we, the the we, that. Didn't we, know. So, mm -hmm. so we are now taking mm -hmm. reasonable steps. Like you spoke about, um, I'm, I'm sure it was uh, referring to Section 17 of the, the Public Order Act, number 46 of 1965, the aspect of notification. Yes, you have to notify the Inspector General of Police. Mm -hmm. But it is there stated that having notified the Inspector General of Police, he has to give that permission in writing. Mm -hmm. You understand? And there are considerations. So those are the considerations we must pay. Uh, 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 um, we must pay heed to. Mm. One, there is the aspect of public morality. Yes, you've, you've notified the IGP that you want to come out, you want to process, you want to protest, or you want to demonstrate. But we also have to look at the issues of public morality. We look at the issues of public safety. Mm. We look at the issues of public order, and then we look at the issues of defence. So those are the issues we have to go and discuss. Mm. But if you say you want to come out, and then you want to disrupt the normal flow of traffic. You want to disrupt, disrupt the normal flow of life. Mm. But what do you expect? You just expect the police to come in. So we are saying, I mean, let's leave those things we have been thinking about the police. If you want to demonstrate, you want to protest, come over to the police. Right to the police. Like last week there was a demonstration. They even came as far up to the point of police headquarters. And I even spoke to them. We allowed them to come out. You understand? So let's have the guarantee that it is going to be peaceful. And he kept alluding to that one, peaceful demonstration. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are looking for. Right. If it is peaceful, it's well and good. But if it's not peaceful, and then we fold our hands, then we are going to be held responsible for what happened. Ca 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 that, that can be said for planned protests. I mean, for these calls on social media and all of that, and on, on the different social media handles and platforms. But what's in a, in, in a situation where that protest has to be, I mean, spontaneous? Say, for example, a group of um, employees at AYV now are, are dissatisfied or are angry. And, I mean, we're here for some settlement. And at the end of the day, things didn't go well. And we just want to make our voices heard. And maybe we just want to, 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 um, to protest and go along the streets, maybe down to, to some authorities to make some complaints. Uh, in those situations, what do the police do? We can still engage you. Mm. I'm sure they are always ring leaders. Last week we had the same scenario. Mm. Bachelor Street never told us they were going to do ABC, and all of a sudden they were shouting all over the place. Mm. We didn't do anything sinister. We went there, we were able to put them under control. Mm. We spoke, we had some discussions with them, and then at the end of the day, the situation was kind, was was like mm -hmm. it, it, it returned to, to normal. It mm. was stable again. So those are the kinds of situations. If it is spontaneous, we have to police it. We have no alternative. We have to police it. Mm. But at the end of the day, um, a spontaneous protest or a demonstration, if that one goes the other way around. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, after the demonstrations, we'll have to ask the, the ring leaders to come and account mm. for their actions. But the aspect of accountability is also key when it comes to democracy. Right. So those are the situations, my brother. All right. Let, let, let me allow you to, to, to quickly have a bite. <laughs> Just, just, just to further emphasize the fact that uh, wielding the baton is a difficult thing altogether, mm. especially in uh, a developing country like ours, a post-war country, where in ideal situations, uh, given the scenario that El Rashid has painted, mm -hmm. you'll have spontaneous demonstrations right. or even well-organized demonstrations going without any let or hindrance. Because those people that will be coming out to do the demonstrations will have a theme and they will stick to that theme. They will not go about destroying public property. Trust me, even in the most civilized of nations, mm. if people go on spontaneous demonstrations or organized ones and begin to destroy public property, the police are not going to sit idly by and allow that to happen, to continue. They will disperse the crowd. But if the demonstrations are peaceful, whether they are spontaneous, organized, notifying the police and the police sit together and that kind of a thing. Trust me, they are not going to have problems. Besides, there are a whole lot of uh, discussions mm. all over the place. Social media is awash with a whole lot of bloggers, people sending messages. Most of them, ones that are actually meant to foment trouble, nobody goes after those sets of people and arrest them. 
because it is recognized that uh, people have the rights, the, the, the freedom to expression and that kind of a thing. But let us face the reality. Mm. If we are not planning demonstrations, whether we want to make them spontaneous or we actually want to make them organized, but at the background, we've actually given an indication of a plans that are meant to derail the entire peace in the country. You have to be, you have to be, to be a callous person that is in authority to allow that to happen, even if somebody were to come forward to ask for those sort of, sort of demonstrations. Prior to August 10, the, demo, the, 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 the message was on the 8th, 9th, and 10th. 8th, sit home. 9th, sit home. 10th, come and take over the government of the state. And when we'll be doing so, bike riders who do not join us, motorists who do not join us, are going to be lynched from their vehicles and burnt alive. Trust me, nobody will want to allow that to happen. No sane person will allow that to happen. So if the demonstrators or the planned demonstrations are one that are actually genuinely intended to convey a message, you will not begin to attack police. You will not to want to begin to exchange invectives with the police that is there to protect your process, mm. to, to guide your process. I mean, in Sierra Leone, I always refer to our past experiences. Even where students, school pupils, come from a, a, a spot meet, they will cause a whole lot of troubles uh, 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 along the routes. And the implications is actually on the majority of the people, those poor traders that are fending for themselves. The August 10th incident, even before people reached onto uh, the Abacha Street, PZ, coming towards State House, they had started looting shops. What is the relationship between protests for taking over government and actually breaking into people's shop and stealing their, their wares. You know, we have to face the reality. The pictures that uh, we are painting of uh, actually getting people coming to demonstrate without any problems and that kind of a thing actually obtains in ideal situations. The reason it is important for the police to be engaged is because at the end of the day, the onus is on them to provide security to ensure that uh, if you have indicated that uh, these are the people that are going to be part of our demonstration, mm -hmm. they do not allow other people to hijack. Let because me for this, every demonstration... Let me ask this question now. There, there, there have been concerns, including um, the, the just um, released um, August um, incident reports by the special committee set up by President Bill. There have been concerns as to how even the police force handle these demonstrators or demonstrations. Um, that, that there are concerns of capacity, there are concerns of even the level of professionalism um, being employed by the police to handle these protests. So, I, I, I've, I, I've, I've, um, have there been situations where the, an assessment has been done on how the, 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 the police handle these incidents, their capacity, uh, I mean, are there, uh, are there things to push for them to be better capacitated? So at the end of the day, when they go into the field, all we have to see is professionalism. Yes, of course, several efforts, mm. several efforts, both internally as a police force and even externally as a security sector. The, the, the idea has been how to capacitate our police and make them comfortable in the discharge of their duties. As I speak now, several trainings are ongoing in ensuring that uh, we give capacity to our officers mm -hmm. who will be discharging their functions, say, for example, for elections. The IESPC I mentioned yes. went around the country, did a, a, a risk mapping, risk assessment, produced documents, and out of those documents, we've now been able to roll out some of the provisions in those documents. The election security strategy, a training manual, a communication strategy. And beyond that, we also had done a capacity needs assessment mm. with the entire gamut of the security sector, i.e. police, the military, and all of those, and see how efforts could be made to capacitate or to add what is existing. Mm. We have to concede that uh, it is challenging 
having all of the gears that uh, you may want. If, as a country, we had all of the, the resources, mm -hmm. we want to have the best police force in terms of their logistics, in terms of the, 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 the trainings that they have, and all of that. But what is within our capacity? What it is that uh, we can give as a country? We give that, and we give that joyously. That is why we provide a lot of trainings across the board, all of the time. Starting from the time a police officer is recruited at police training school, a lot of professionalism is being uh, impacted on them. But don't forget that uh, these are very big forces. You might have done your best in giving professionalism, in giving all of the training. It would also be dependent on the individual officer to be able to conduct him or herself in a way that is professional. Mm. That is why there are checks and balances. For those officers that err, they have structures to ensure right. that uh, they are corrected. Mm -hmm. let, let, let's have an insider perspective, um, ACP. Uh, uh, you're not oblivious to the fact that for every demonstration, you've been condemned, I mean, as a force, um, for the way you've handled um, th those incidents or situations. What is really responsible for um, the way the force has carried itself in terms of responding to these situations over time? Uh, well, it's because people don't know. Maybe mm. they don't know how we operate. You know, there are levels of force. Mm. And uh, maybe sometimes you start with a polite request, and then you can move up to the last point. Say, for example, the police officer has gone down. Maybe people start looting shops, and then you expect the police to be there um, parading, maybe like sometimes people say when there is a, a, a fire incident, mm -hmm. they don't understand. Mm -hmm. When the fire force, when they come around, they are there. By the time they are doing, taking the equipment to do that, people say, oh, they are here parading. They, it's, not, it's not like parade, they are doing a job. Mm. Understand? They are doing a job. So we cannot be there and then we allow things to happen. And then at the end of the day, you say, hey, police, they are, not, they, they are not professional. But the fact of the matter is, People have been condemning because they do not know our mode of operations. Mm. So this is why, like for the, the subsisting issue, because of what happened in August 2022, and then we've started hearing the same thing. Mm. So this is why we are now coming out and letting the people know. Because again, in public relations, when you, let, when you fail to let the people know, people are going to form their own perception about things. So we don't want people to continue to form their own perception about things. So this is why we are letting them know that if you engage the police, around the table, that one is simple and straightforward. I'm not sure there's going to be a wrestling match around the table. No way. Mm. You understand? But if you say, no, we are not going to engage the police, we're going to be out there, loot shops, injure people, then we have no alternative. We have to engage you as well. Sometimes you use the dispersal dispers method. Understand? Maybe if there is a crowd, you use, fire, you, you, you use anti canisters so that you disperse them. So some other times you can just try to keep them in a particular area mm. and then allow for situations to get better and then you give them a free passage. You understand? But nobody wants its movement to be restricted. What, 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 what would necessitate the fire of live rounds? I mean, you've, all, you've been accused of that many times. We fire live rounds when we know somebody's life is, is now in danger. Mm. It could be the police, it could even be the civilians. Right. If you check the Constitution, Section 16, this is very clear. Nobody has the right to take somebody's life. Mm. Nobody. But there are conditions given. Right. If you read through, the conditions are there. So when those conditions, eh, when they necessitate themselves, then we can outdo the need for this is, These are the situations. Do, 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 um, do the force have um, operational independence outside political influence? We do have operational independence. Mm. <laughs> what are you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> if you check the constitution, it is there. Right. Now, when it comes to the day to day running of the force, that one is in the hands of the Spectrum of Police. Mm -hmm. It's in the answer of the Spectrum of Police, the day to day running of the force. Right. Uh, you know, um, le let me ask Rashid this question. A friend of mine told me by, by, by default the force is politicized in the sense that the council is being, is being added by politicians over time. At some point, I have um, Karamo Kaba here who served as Deputy Eternal Affairs Minister under the APC, and he was accusing the police of being politically influenced. So I had to ask him whether that was out of experience um, when, when he was there. And, uh, and looking at what is happening right now, where do you situate that? Do, do you see the police being politically influenced? Yes. Um, 
<laughs> it, it's a straightforward question. Right. And it's, the answer is very clear. It's in our constitution. So um, no, no police officer can, can say otherwise. And if, if you dare, I will challenge you that you are not being truthful. Because, so that is one also problem that the police is encountering out of their, their hands, structural challenges. So our constitution has not helped the situation. Uh, it has created room for the police council to now um, be headed by a political actor, uh, the vice president, um, and then um, we have the president also appointing the IG. All right. So these two mechanisms automatically impute political interference, manipulation, and control over the, the police architecture. So it's a conversation we must have. How do we reform the police? There are many countries now, South Africa and Kenya, they are making it in, in roads in terms of having independence, not just only um, institutional independence, but also um, legal and constitutional independence, so that there is um, a call for applications. For example, the IG's position is no longer an appoint, appointed position. It's a call for application. Mm -hmm. If you qualify, the activity is done, you apply, and then you go through the board, the scrutiny, and then they are justified openly and defended. They, they are interviewed openly. Mm -hmm. Then they show how they get to the, to the best, perhaps two or three, and then the president now confirms. So efforts have been made to depoliticize the institution. In Sierra Leone, we are not doing that. Mm -hmm. And don't tell me that that don't have an interplay into their, their act. So in fact, the Yellow police have been, have been, have been I mean, castigated as a regime police. Mm -hmm. And it has been true for a, to a large extent. You see, now, SLEP people might be happy with perhaps what they, they're doing. But trust me, if they're in opposition, they will cry again as APC is crying. You know, they cried also when APC was in um, power and the same police. So in a way, they have been consistent in doing their, 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 their wrongdoings in many respects. So let's don't be happy with that. In that other APC regime, SAP regime, we should be crying and helping the police um, to get better. Of course, there are, there are also challenges in, in the area of logistics, like they rightly said, you know, all they have in their hands, perhaps, are weapons. And we don't have even other kind of, you know, um, um, means of dispelling, you know, a righteous crowd and all of that. There should be water tanks, you know, there should be enough of them to spray on people, to scare them away. There should be um, rubber bullets, there should be pepper spray. Mm. Many of them should be in their hands, not just the guns and, for example, when I look at the issue, issue that happened with the, um, the flag bearer of the APC. I, I was looking at it and, and, and saying, why that the officer had to shoot on the vehicle carrying the, the flag bearer. What, what is the essence of that? So assuming that glass was down and that um, um, person has suffocated and something happened, that in itself will have you know, endangered the security interests mm. of the nation. So we, we look at these issues and then we now, and, and not much has been done by the police itself to handle that issue in terms of accountability. So people are watching these things and the trust issue is not really helping out. There is a whole lot of distrust between the police and the public. And that is why we are coming in to say, hey, this is a bad sign. We have to come together and we trust our police officers. They are very good, don't get me wrong, they are very good officers in the security architecture in this country. I know there are a few bad eggs that are giving them bad name and we have to find them out and deal with them. Because these people are, are, are helping the nation, they are risking their lives, they are, they are risking their families and they are doing a lot for our security. So the few that are not doing it right, we must all go after, for example, that officer that fired that tear gas on that vehicle. We all must condemn him and have him arrested and charged because nobody should do that to any flag bearer, be it APC, SLP, NGC. No, there are many ways to handle it. So these are the things we are saying. When one of them go beyond the line, they must all make effort to condemn and deal with that person to set a precedent that this is not acceptable in our society and we must not do this. So again, I agree there are structural challenges, there are logistical challenges, also there are training challenges, recruitment challenges. How do you recruit people into the police? Many at times we have many bad acts that are filtered in and they create a lot of mischief for the police, I mean security sector. So let's look at all of this clearly. There are many things that are not in their control and there are a few that are in their control. So, so, so issues, what are those that are in their control, mm. but the, the, the institution does not have <coughs> the required capacity? I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. At some point, um, the, the, the Center for Accountability and the Rule of Law published a report yes. I mean, that um, for a quarter or oh year, the, the FSU was receiving a million as mm. budgetary support. Mm. And then I, I, I had programs here. I, I advocated for... for, for 
for improvement for that budget to, to, to be increased and all of that. So funding is also a challenge for the police. And is that not negatively impacting their output? Yes, I, I agreed. And I think this is also a, a, a discussion we will have openly, how they carry their budget to parliament. They must have perhaps a separate kind of budget carried to parliament to make sure it's quickly approved. That's what's happening in progressive countries. In the USA, for example, they have separate budgets that go for security. Nobody meddle with it. Automatically, it's approved and then they have the capacity to carry out their duty. We can have this kind of conversation. The police must be able to talk about these things openly and not be afraid that they will be sacked the next day. Because we know they are really, really deprived of financial support. You know, and that's the truth. They don't even have the equipment. So what happens? They don't even have the team that goes first as first responders. All the people they send are people who have the, the guns and the tear gas and the ammunition. No, there must be a team of first responders. When it gets escalatory, then you can call the others now to come in and quell the situation. People look at me, many people are angry. When you now go with also weapons to make sure they are quelled down, you just flare up the whole thing. You carry people who are counselors. Excuse me, what is happening here? Come, please, let's discuss. Can you talk to that kind of engagement might even dissipate their tensions and make them perhaps leave all their plans to go and be violent. But if the first responders are the ones who have the guns, then we escalate a simple situation that could have been solved by a simple dialogue. So yes, I agree, there are challenges financially, there are also challenges in logistics, and the police must be clear on this, openly discuss it, and we can have a separate budget for them to be approved by parliament and not be lumped into the national budget and then have the whole challenges again happening. And again, to me, we can discuss on the appointment of the IG. Mm. That is very key. We know our IGs are a really challenge in that respect. The president appoints them and can fire them at any time. That alone, it's a fear hanging upon their heads, you know, and that can even lead to compromise in many aspects. So if we have them recruited by call for applications, they go there by merit, they can be emboldened to resist the manipulations when they show their faces. So that's, what, that's, my, that's my take on this. We're not condemning them in, in outright. We're saying they are they're doing well in many aspects, but there are challenges and we must be bold enough to engage them on these challenges and see how we can improve. The elections are here. Security challenge is a key indicator. We are seeing the signs. Everybody's aggrieved. The other day, there is the, a ruling from PPRC to, to stop street rallies and all of that. And again, these are the things we don't like in our democracy. People don't understand that in a democracy, you have to follow due process. Nobody has the power in democracy to single-handedly ban rights. Let me be very clear on this. PPRC, not even the president, has the power, except he declares a statement of emergency. Otherwise, it's limited. Yeah. So the police did that also in under APC. And a brave lawyer took them to court. And the ruling has been passed by the Supreme Court to say the police was wrong to say that no vehicle should be used on pulling day. And now we are seeing a lawyer again in PPRC, unfortunately so, trying to ban people from exercising their rights. That's not how we behave in democracy. Go to the court, have the orders, and then you implement them. All right. Um, let me run quickly through a few messages. Momo Vande is saying, Samuel, are you aware of what is presently trending on social media about the 27th of April 2023? They are planning... Um, another August 10. Sulaiman Kamara is saying, please, my brothers and sisters in Sulaiman, don't allow anyone to incite you again to protest. We all see waiting happen August 10. Let it don't repeat itself. Um, Francis Masako is saying, Sulaiman is a country. Please, let's keep the peace of our beloved nation. No country um, we could do so out on Independence Day in black. Not good for us all. Please, guys, let's learn to love our country above party. Uh, Momo Vandi is saying, where are all those that were criticizing the police on the August issue? Why is Amnesty International and other human rights activists in Sierra Leone? I have not heard anything from them in view of what is churning on social media. The same people that instigated the August 10 are the same people instigating the independence um, um, riots again. Edwina John is saying, when you use other means to silence the people, they will bounce on you, the police. Um, the people in Sierra Leone are harassed when they speak against um, the BO government. So the diasporas are speaking on behalf of us, um, the own base. All right. Um, how about the police provide security for the upcoming demonstration and for once be an independent um, institution of government advocating for our rights is the beauty of democracy. Edwina again. Daniel Danito B. Bangura is saying, you guys should not be afraid for any protest if really you um, are serving the people of this country. 
and the police have been biased. They always protect the government rather than the ordinary people of this country. Ronald um, Bresford Ignatius, Judge Tony, saying, what is going on right now on the rights? So peaceful protest is um, reminiscent of the bad old days of Sierra Stevens' era. Peaceful protest is a fundamental right of citizens, and the police are there to maintain the peace and should be neutral with non-lethal weapon used, with non-lethal force used. But however, due to orders from above, their powers of office, um, they are unable to use their mandates. Where have we gone wrong in the right of peaceful protest? Um, the police is good to escalate situation. Very unprofessional institution, and Wina is accusing the police there again. Mohamed Titu is saying the SLP seems to be a very weak institution. Their integrity is lost, and civilians have no confidence in them anymore. They need respect, the rights of citizens. They need to respect the rights of citizens and not to deny them their rights in a democratic society. Lamin Bangra is saying demonstration is the people's right to express their freedom. Um, so like, Judge Stone again is saying, would those who are pro-government not have the right of protest? We know the answer to that. Unfortunately, our police are in a dilemma where they cannot do due diligence in their mandate as um, protectors over its citizens as the executive office holds sway. Yet we see there's freedom of speech, but to repress its citizens. Right, let me take a few more. Um, Hi, highlight any peace. Okay, um, Momo Vande is asking Ronald to highlight any peaceful demonstrations that were brutalized. Our protests have never been peaceful because the protesters are always bent on disruptive behavior. George Owell is saying, Brilliant submission there, lawyer Dumbuya. This administration must open up and allow citizens to express their dissatisfaction. Also, this administration failed to communicate with the citizens about what is going on in the nation. Um, John Olusola Akimbade is asking, is Adebayo bigger than Sierra Leone? Government should hold him responsible for all the unrest in the country. Um, Kamara Charles is saying, Rashid is talking as if he is not on the ground. How on earth the police would allow people to demonstrate without procedure? Um, Joshua Mewa is saying, even the police officers are now intelligent than some lawyers in this country. God save Salon. Um, lawyer Rashid, may Allah Almighty bless you. You have said it all. The police should help the demonstrators with proper security. Alpha CC is saying three more messages to go, guys. You would have to forgive me. We have so many messages this morning. Um, I cannot go through all of them. Abbas Abib Kokabangali is saying peaceful demonstration. When have we ever seen a peaceful demonstration in, Sier in Sierra Leone? Rashid, have you ever been part of any peaceful demonstration? Sierra Leoneans do not have respect for the police. One police officer can't make an arrest. He will be badly beaten. There are certain people who listen to Adebayo. Majority of the people don't listen to Adebayo. If that was the case, August 10 would have been all over the country. So, Mr. Rashid, we know where the demonstrations or demonstrators are coming, those who are responsible for it. Good morning. Um, Sisseti Usman is saying the security forces need to make sure that politicians, um, bosses, Politicians do not use them. If they do allow politicians to use them, then they themselves would suffer in the process or after the process, let them remember that. Stephen Yale is saying, stop this talk talk. They have informed you about the 27th. They are coming again. What's your plan for the security of the state? And I think I have to hold the messages there. We have hundreds of them this morning on Facebook, but unfortunately, we cannot go through um, all of them. Now, um, I know that there are some comments that you would want to respond to, but... but, but um, redirecting our focus. What are the plans now? Now that we've been alerted again as a nation um, of this trend that people want to go to the street on Independence Day to protest, what are the plans? Uh, well, uh, we are working together with ONS and um, they are coordinating our activities. Mm -hmm. We're going to ensure, first, let me make this one very clear. Uh, for the last August incident, right. Mark P was invoked. No. And um, that one still subsists. Right. So it's just a matter of uh, maybe we heighten things. Mm. Understand? Uh, we are we are having like two police officers. Maybe we now increase that one to five or six, mm. as the case may be, or maybe we increase the level of patrols, as the case may be. So we are ensuring that as best as possible, mm -hmm. we provide high visibility assurance policing. Right. You're gonna see our posture like yesterday. Uh, I'm sure you you, you are around Cotton Tree and some other areas. We mm -hmm. are around all over the place. 
So we continue to make, make sure that we increase our posture, and uh, we increase our visibility, we continue to do our patrols, we continue to have a mobile checkpoint and static checkpoint, and so on and so forth. And then we continue to source information, right. which we can um, translate to intelligence, as the case may be, and then work on those ones. Mm. Tomorrow, I think we will not see them in the open. Right. Um, Karim? Yes, uh, we want to we express thanks and appreciation to the various texters. Uh, they have commented on a whole range of issues, and we are pleased that uh, people are following up these kinds of discussions. But uh, I may be remiss if I do not mention this, that uh, when August 10 came, after August 10, mm -hmm. those people who made the calls on people to come and demonstrate or take over the state, mm -hmm. Uh, refused them, they denied them. They refused taking responsibility of their incitements. Mm -hmm. uh, certain people were on, are on record to say, we did not send you to go and kill people, we did not send you to go and loot shops and that kind of a thing. That is what we are saying. If you call on people to come out spontaneously in these kinds of uh, illegal activities, there are going to be consequences, mm. which led to the deaths of uh, civilians, sadly, and police officers. And some people even practically celebrated it, those deaths. Mm. So this should serve as a lesson for all of us, that uh, functioning within the framework of the law is a virtue. Anything other than that will create a whole lot of problems. I want to appeal to Sierra Leoneans that uh, come the 27th, go about your normal business. We have stated that uh, we are not against people demonstrating. It is a right, but uh, we should not only be happy on the rights, 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 without referencing the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. All countries across the world have got provisions. If you have this right, you have also this responsibility to ensure mm -hmm. that uh, you enjoy those rights. So let us don't fall for these kinds of uh, baits that will send us into harm's way. I mean, the reality is, demonstrations in Sierra Leone are ones that are always fraught with violence. Mm. And most often, even where the police is willingly providing security for the people, the mm -hmm. people come and uh, target them. You see miscreants now wanting to settle scores with other groupings. And because it is the responsibility of the police to provide for the safety and security of everybody, they will not sit idly by and allow that to happen. This much talk about cliche, orders from above, mm. orders from above, all of the time people make use of uh, this phrase, that people are listening mm. to orders from above and that kind of a thing. The less we talk about it, the better, because a police officer deployed in a particular deployment has a mandate for being deployed there. Mm. Most often, if he carries out his functions within that mandate, mm -hmm. people will still say he's received orders from above. We don't like situations where a police officer mm -hmm. performing his duty, carrying a weapon, will now have his life in jeopardy and will be forced to use that arm. Mm. And sometimes it is the thinking that uh, these were unarmed civilians. Mm. To be armed is a relative concept. It's not only related to one carrying a rifle. Mm -hmm. Any other thing can be used as, a, as an arm, and it can be very deadly. So we have to be very much a, a, a patriotic in making these kinds of discussions. Mm -hmm. If people want to demonstrate, whether it is the 27th, whether it is beyond the 27th, mm -hmm. it is their right to do so, but let them also follow the due process. All right. Without the due process, it will be challenging. And if you had given a kind of a explanation as to what you plan to do on the 27th, nobody wants to allow that to happen. Okay. Um, Rashid, quickly. Yes. So My last statement will be, first is to make it very clear that we are the middle keepers, we are the gatekeepers as civil society organizations. We are here to talk on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone and to also advise the government that is the duty bearer and the states are the right holders in the context of a democracy. So that's my role I'm playing, and I know people are making 
you know, a, a difference in terms of, in terms of our role. So let me have the advice the, the police on what to do quickly as I round up. One, be careful, I'm talking to the police now, be careful and be sensitive when civil society organizations, opposition parties, um, women group, disabled group, youth groups, workers union apply for um, notification for um, protest. Whenever you see these, these groups apply, be very careful because it's the gauge that tells you how democratic you are and how transparent you are to allowing the processes. So be very careful when they apply it. Also, do not allow any government or any person to put you in conflict with the people of Sierra Leone. You are a people-centered police. A democratic policing requires you to put people at the center. So always love them, serve them, and make sure you are friendly with people. Do not allow anybody to put you in conflict with them. Also remember that you are policing within a context of democracy and not an autocratic form of government. So do not take unlawful orders. You have to take lawful orders in the context of democracy. One that kill the people, do not take that order. That is unlawful. And lastly, to the people of Sierra Leone, let me also see the opportunity to talk about perhaps the pending demonstration I'm hearing all over the place. Please, it is time for elections. We have two months to go. The best opportunity to express your dissent against any government is through the ballot box. And the opportunity is here. Let's seize that opportunity and express your dissent in a democratic way. That's my call. We, our country has gone through a lot. We have suffered a lot as a nation. And it's not time to also open up to many, many you know, unhealthy you know, debates and problems again. It's time for healing. The August 10 um, vaccines are affecting the nation, and we are still not healed from that process. Let's not open again on that Pandora's box. Let's use the election, which is two months or so away, to now express our dissent in a democratic way and, and ensure that Sierra Leone remains a peaceful and very progressive nation going forward. Thank All you. right. Thank you very much, Leo Rashid Dumbia, Executive Director, um, Legal Link. Thank you very much, ACP, um, the head of media for Vasilian Police Force, um, Brahma Kamara. And thank you very much, Abdul Karim Will, um, Director of Communications, Office of National Security. It's been a pleasure having all three of you here this morning, gentlemen. And I hope Sierra Leoneans have gotten the message um, to remain calm, be peaceful, and don't go out um, to protest on um, April 27th.